All right, so as of watching this video, Smartlead covers a certain number of parameters for you to have access to immediately when you start doing your tests. So the first one on the left over here, what you see is a, just a general progress bar walking you through how many tests are being executed if you're doing a combination of sender mailboxes and receiver mailboxes. Let's just say you have 10 to 10, that's 100. So let's just say about 50 went through, that means this should show 50%. Um, now the next thing over here is the overall result. The overall result is basically walking you through the overall health of this particular test, which is obviously associated to a campaign. So by nature, you can use this number pretty accurately to assume if this overall result is good, by nature of that fact, your campaign is going to do pretty well and you can confidently turn off the open tracking on the campaign if you'd like. So we want to aim for something above 60 to 70 percent. Usually, to be honest with you, 75 and 80 percent above is a good number. But if you're just starting off, 60, 70 percent is fine. And then you can start improving your health. So now let's go into each of these variables over here. Do note, by the time you watch this video, there might be one or two more variables as we are improving the experience every single hour from the time we launch this. So the first one is the inbox is pretty straightforward. If an email lands in the primary folder of a Gmail, Outlook or third party ESP platform where it's European, uh, whether it's um, Southeast Asian, whatever it is, we pick it up and we mark it as, I mean, we've seen that as the uh, primary inbox land, that is what the inbox is referring to. Tab is usually referring to, like the text says over here, it could be anything other than the primary or spam folder. It could be the promotions folder, it could be a subsidiary folder, it could be any folder, it could be the focus folder, whatever folder that the respective platform has over here. When I said focus folder, I was referring to Outlook, but we've also adjusted for that as well, and we move that and consider it to be the primary. Now, the spam is effectively any email that's landed in the junk mail, the spam folder or junk email folders, perceptively so on the popular ESPs and any other ESP that allocates an email as marked as spam in that folder, that's what that's referring to. The missing is an interesting one because what ends up happening is when you send emails, sometimes what occurs is due to a variety of reasons through the relay networks that have to go through from the point you send an email to the point perhaps maybe an Outlook, if you're sending from an Outlook or Gmail, they don't like the IP address that is allocated to your Outlook account at that point in time. By the way, you can reach out to Outlook or Gmail to help rotate those IP addresses because each workspace has or each tenant has allocated IPs that rotate every two weeks. If Outlook for whatever doesn't like that IP because all the messages are originate from there, there are times the email can just quote unquote, get lost in the relay, right? Uh, that's just an overarching simplified example. But sometimes what ends up happening is the email, because of the copy that's being sent or the IP or a variety of reasons, the email will actually be marked as sent. That means their service will show that or respond back to our services, uh, an API call saying that the email has actually sent successfully, but the email is not gonna show up on the receiver parties email or their inbox, their primary, the promotions or wherever it is. So in this case, seven means after this whole test is completed, there are seven emails that were sent that just were not received on the receiver side. Now the last one over here is what we call unmailable. Uh, the words can be made better, but this as to what unmailable basically means is if you see that it means the email accounts that you've connected for this particular test, their authentication layer failed. This can happen for a variety of reasons at the time where we try to authenticate the account to send a message. Maybe your token has expired. Maybe it's an old account. There's, as you know, if you watch this, you're already part of Smartly to some extent. You know that there's disconnects that can and can't happen for uh, n amount of reasons that can do with oversending, undersending, old domains, um, unused mailboxes, um, cross parallel sends. So that can always lead to some sort of clog or a bit of resistance from the ESP when we try to connect to it. If that does occur, and that token fails, then we basically mark it as unmailable, saying that we were not actually able to send an email from the sender. Now you should see this as a much lower number. Obviously this is a test account, so please work with those numbers as well. We're adding one more folder, uh, one more column over here as well that you'll see soon, which is effectively going to track any email that is going to be bounced by our own, e by our own seed list. Now, take that word very, very nuanced. When I say bounced, it does not mean the mailbox don't exist. Obviously they exist, Smartly owns them and we track them every few minutes to ensure that they're consistently valid and available, whether it's Gmail or Outlook or any other ESPs. Sometimes when the emails bounce, you will actually see these emails show up the experience will be improved to show you the reason for the bounce, but most of the time it would be because your copy was marked as spam by Gmail Outlooks or whatever SCG, which is Secure Email Gateway's uh, own wrapper saying that this email is just not good. It's probably going to be spam or the IP that you're sending from is a problematic IP, which is in the blacklist. In that situation, that is going to be another column that you're going to pick up over there. But for now, that is also going to show up on missing. But depending on when you watch this video, that option will also be available for you. So this is the overall breakdown of what these individual row items mean. And in the next videos, we're going to go ahead and explain exactly what each of these do mean when you click into this report, for example, like here, and we'll break down every single one of these things as well in thorough detail so you can make 
educated, classy decisions to make sure your emails are consistently landing in the primary folder. See you in the next one.